pop up where we set the calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, a, he, he, a. Fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another episode on Papa Flemish's Advent Calendar. And today is some really wonky shit, which is actually justified if you are very careful. And it's super cool. And if you have never seen something like that before, you might find it to be like magic, math magic. It's really magical. It's extremely cool. So stay tuned for the conclusion. By the way, don't forget to check out my spring shop and make use of the code <laughs> to get 15% of everything over there as well as 10% over on everything on STEM merch. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And now we are going to dive right in. So what I put here on the chalkboard is just the regular old integral equation for the exponential function. We all know that the exponential function under differentiation is going to be preserved. It's going to be the same. So if you use an indefinite integral, you are going to get the same result, namely e to the x plus c. Now what is going to happen if we apply up and lower bounds to that? For example, from 0 to x, where x is our new variable. Um, this right here is just a dummy variable, so you can also call it cow and it will work the same way. Um, then what is going to happen is we are going to end up with e to the x, evaluated from 0 to x, and this is going to end up with e to the x minus 1. I mean, this is just the same result as before, where the constant is equal to negative 1. And now we are going to do some <laughs> functional analysis, functional anal fuckery. Um, it's going to be very nice. What we are going to do is we are going to define ourselves a real operator, namely the integral as being defined as being just i, it's an integral operator. Okay, in functional analysis, you are dealing with real and complex operators and how they um, work under certain norms. Now, we are gonna rewrite this equation as being i, not of, this is i, the integral operator applied to the exponential function where i has the up and lower bounds from zero to x, is gonna vary to e to the x minus one. And here's where the fun starts. And something like this you always find in quantum, in quantum mechanics and the like. You are dealing with operators there and you are using them and manipulating them to your heart's content up until you arrive at something nice. I'm looking at you, and Andrew. You're doing weird shit to my integrals over there in your PhD. And what we are going to do is we are going to rearrange this equation a tiny little bit. I'm going to add 1 on both sides and subtract i e to the x on both sides too. Leaving us overall with 1 being equal to e to the x minus i applied to e to the x. And now what we are going to do is we are going to, <coughs> excuse me for this functional anal professors, factor out the e to the x. What we are ending up with on the right hand side is a new real operator, which is just a translation, you could say, of the integral operator i by 1 overall giving us, if we factor out e to the x, I'm going to, um, yeah, just name this operation factoring out for now. Um, it's going to result in 1 minus the integral operator applied to e to the x. Do not get the stupid idea to put the e to the x to the left hand side and you are going to end up with a bloody mess and this is not how that shit works. Now what we are going to do is we are going to take the multiplicative inverse of one minus the integral operator on both sides. Imagine it like um, in a banner space, for example, just using your, your regular old um, operations like multiplication, division and the like on these operators using those like functions or just uh, numbers in general. And everything works out nicely if it's a banner space. We are going to divide, I'm gonna um, call this divide, both sides by one minus i, leaving us overall with e to the x being equal to, and now be careful, we are going to take the multiplicative inverse, you could say, of this thing, 1 divided by 1 minus i. But don't get the idea that you can just leave nothing here, because this is not the case. What we are doing is we are applying, we, we are applying the multiplicative inverse of this new operator, 1 minus i, to our number 1, to our constant on the left-hand side. So we are applying this whole operator to the number 1. And now you might notice something. 1 divided by 1 minus x, for example. This is just a geometric series. And here is where the fun starts. Because now we are diving deep into functional anal. If under the norm in the Banner space, for example, our integral operator is bounded, 
I think at least that's what it was. It, it, it has been five years. Then we can make use of the geometric series on this operator here too, resulting in e to the x being equal to the geometric series where k goes from zero to infinity of, and now we got i and not to the k power. This is i being applied k times to our constant one. And now what does it mean for i to be applied to our constant 1 k times on the kth term? Well, let us write everything out. This is going to result in e to the x being equal to. So the first term, 0 times applying the integral operator to 1 is just the constant in and of itself, 1. Now next up, we are applying our integral operator once to the number 1, resulting in plus the integral from 0 to x of 1 dx, which is just blah 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 dx. Okay, now what does it mean to apply the integral operator two times to our number one, where this is just applying the integral operator to the integral operator being applied to one? And I think you can spot a pattern here, plus the integral operator being applied three times, that's, that's uh, an absolute mess, to our x, and so on and so forth. Um, formally, you would need to write out another dx here and more dx's here. But uh, I'm just going to leave this out for now. Okay. Um, and this infinitely many types. And now we are going to see if we can spot a pattern once again. So um, if we integrate dx from 0 to x, this is going to result in x from 0 to x. And on 0, it's going to vanish. It's, it's a monic polynomial. And on x, it's just going to be x plus the integral operator applied to the integral from 0 to x dx. We know what this is, namely nothing other than x. So x dx plus the integral operator applied to the integral operator applied to um, x dx plus dot dot dot. And now we can continue. What is the integral operator applied to x? Well, this right here is going to result in x squared over 2. This is nothing special. We know how to integrate polynomials, but the result in and of itself is really quite damn beautiful. And it's a generalization to Taylor series expansions. Now, once again, we get the same thing here, namely x squared over 2 leaving us overall for now with e to the x being equal to 1 plus x plus we know the integral of x is x squared over 2 and then we are going to get the integral operator applied to x over 2 um, dx plus dot dot dot. And I'm going to stop here with the dot dot dots because we can spot a pattern very soon and we all probably know what the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function looks like overall and we can see quite clearly that it does work out that way. Now, if we bring the one half to the front, for example, we are going to integrate x squared, which is going to result in x to the third power over 3. So overall, e to the x is going to be equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus 1 half times x to the third power over 3 plus dot dot dot. And if we continue this process of applying the, the integral operator k times to the k term, we are going to end up with 1 is the same as x to the 0th power over 1, which is 0 factorial plus x to the first power divided by 1 factorial plus x squared divided by, you guessed it, 2 factorial plus x to the third power divided by 1 times 2 times 3 is 3 factorial and so on plus dot dot dot. Leaving us overall with a nice result of e to the x being equal to the sum where k reaches from 0 to infinity of x to the kth power divided by k factory. And we all know that this right here is the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function or the Maclaurin series expansion. And that's it. And I think that is seriously beautiful. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not try it out with other things that you can differentiate, for example, the sine and the cosine, see where it lands you. It's a very interesting procedure and something similar works with the identity that um, the differential operator applied to e to the x is equal to e to the x in and of itself. But you need to put more work in. I'm leaving this as an exercise to the reader. But I hope this opened your eyes and showed you something new that you haven't seen before. And this right here is absolutely beautiful and functional anal is just absolutely wonderful. And you should check out some books or university courses on functional anal if you want to see more wonky shit. And yeah, don't forget to also check out my NPC channel um, for other videos here on the advent calendar. Tomorrow's video is probably going to be out on NP cooking. So definitely stay tuned for that. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. See ya!